All right, here's the first story. We got grand jury indicts Daniel Penny in chokehold death of Jordan Neely. Neely's death was ruled a homicide, according to the medical examiner. They say the exact charges will not be unsealed until Penny appears in court at a later date, the sources said. Penny was initially arrested on second degree manslaughter charge. Okay, so to clarify, the uh, uh, I, I thought they had indicted him for that reason. So we don't know exactly what he was indicted for, but he was arrested for second degree manslaughter. Video showed Penny putting Neely in a chokehold. On May 1st, several witnesses observed Neely making threats. Assistant District Attorney Joshua Steinglass told the judge. Some witnesses told police that Neely was yelling and harassing passengers on the train, authorities said. Police source told ABC News that Penny was not specifically being threatened by Neely when he intervened and that Neely had not become violent and had not been threatening anyone in particular. Neely was homeless at the time of the incident. So there is another witness on the train who said that he was threatening all of their lives, saying he was going to seriously hurt them and that she thought they were in serious danger and that Penny saved their lives. But this is what's happening in big cities. So it's unsurprising to hear that they've actually issued this indictment. The fact that they arrested him in the first place. I have questions about these police officers. I have questions about, you know, where this where this country goes if this is the case. We had that story that we talked about, and we'll get into more detail with San Francisco's downtown district being totally obliterated. And I want to show you this tweet. This is a tweet from Ellen Barkin. Ellen Barkin, um, I'm not familiar with, you know, what her, her career is. I think she's a writer or something. But she just responded, good. So you have people who live in New York who every day are facing serious threats of violence as the city is rife with crime. I Google searched, and I, I hate to be a little crass, but I Google searched rape on at New York uh, a subway. If you Google search that, you will see a ridiculous amount of stories almost every week. Something like that happens. It is shocking to me that there are women in New York City with all of that going on every single week, and they're celebrating the fact that someone tried to help people, to save people from a violent, dangerous individual. Well, I mean, none of these people have any ability to look more than five seconds into the future, and their general worldview is, if something makes me feel positive, happy emotions, it's good. If something makes me feel negative, sad emotions, it's bad. And so hearing about somebody intervening and saving other people's lives potentially, uh, but knowing that that cost the aggressor their life might make somebody feel negative in the immediate short term. And so then they're going to try to find a rationalization for that negative emotion because they don't want to challenge it. They just want to stick with what they feel. And similarly, when you have these stories of people being harmed, of course, you've mentioned this before, Tim, that there are people who are pushed in front of the subway. This never becomes a story, right? When there's completely senseless violence or when a woman is sexually abused uh, in public, it doesn't make headlines the same way that a man defending citizens does. And that's for a very simple reason, because the media wants us to know that if we stand up for ourselves against violent criminals, we will be punished for it. I mean, this is by design. They want criminals to overrun the cities. They want to make life as untenable as possible because this is something Marxists virtually always do when they're trying to upset the social order, make things as unstable for people as possible. Just generally make cities unlivable, I suppose. <clears throat> It's like mm -hmm. the ice cream shop in Seattle that's suing now because their business <laughs> suffered a loss of revenue when the autonomous zone, the Capitol Hill autonomous zone, Chaz, was established. But the same ice cream shop was calling for them to defund the police. So that's right. Yeah, that was, asked for. That, was a, that was a good headline. Ice cream shop that supported defunding police is now suing the city <laughs> because the police didn't help him. It seems like, as I often say, it's a chaotic and destructive force. That is its intention is just to destroy it. I, I can't I can't put myself in the shoes of these voters mm -hmm. of people in New York City, people like Ellen Barkin, who are like, I'm glad that people are stopped, are, are not allowed to defend themselves. It, it It's like bizarro America. You know, it's like it's like intentionally nonsensical illogical and destructive well, yeah what the left has effectively done is it's gotten people to cheer for the prospect of defenselessness right so we're going to defund the police and then we're also going to prosecute you when you defend yourself and we're going to do everything we possibly can to ensure it's as difficult as possible if not impossible for you to get a firearm to protect yourself or your family and we know whenever the left is in control of, of anything things don't get better for people i think one really hilarious example of this was the capitol hill occupied protest or a 
autonomous zone, depending on how you want to refer to it, where leftists literally took over several city blocks in Seattle. And not only did no one in the media call it an insurrection, but ironically enough, this was done in order to protest police violence. And then over the course of this being set up, two teenagers were shot in this autonomous zone that they set up. So they'll try to pursue these insane utopian solutions without actually knowing anything when they're trying to implement you know, these solutions, without actually doing anything that's going to improve life for people, but just trying to shirk off the authority that's already there. And then when people get, get hurt, they're never held to account for it because they had good intentions and what else matters? When I used to talk about the escalation of conflict in this country and the risk of civil war, 2017. There's an article in, in uh, New Yorker. I, I went back over that article today because we just saw the, the president federally indicted by, I'm sorry, the former president, uh, future president, perhaps, uh, very likely. We saw Donald Trump indicted federally by uh, Joe Biden. So this is a president targeting his, politi his political rival. That's the highest level. That's it. What I was saying back then was all of these conflicts that we're seeing, this political conflict, it will reach higher and higher levels of politics. And I was told that I was crazy and that I was wrong. It wasn't going to happen. Now what we're seeing, and the reason I bring this up in this context, is the people that are celebrating a former Marine trying to save lives, celebrating his criminal indictment, arrest and charges when he was trying to protect people, is... It's it, it seems like opposite day. It seems like an inversion on American morals and values. It seems like literally bizarro America. Yeah, this is what happens when people are led by their emotions and not logic. When they've given away, like you look at the pictures of this NBC. Is it NBC or ABC? ABC, ABC News article. There it shows Daniel Penny, bad guy. I mean, he's got handcuffs on. He's got sh five o'clock shed like. Looks got shadow on his face. Then you scroll down and you see the 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 other guy, the, oh, the yeah. homeless guy, yep. look at in this. this glamour picture. Mm -hmm. Like this is the guy that was screaming he was going to kill people on the subway. Uh, but man, you're not like going to know that do. by looking at that beautiful picture of him with all that really nice lighting and the city in the background. Um, I, so I think what happened is this guy walked on the train. and was like, I'm going to kill some, and but he wasn't specifically targeting any one person, and that's the that's the argument they're making. But he was obviously yelling and making people uncomfortable enough that people felt like they had to intervene apparently, and stop this guy before well, he started. They, apparently they all went to like one side to avoid him. Like he was yeah, threatening. That them. is common, maybe well, not yeah. common New York behavior, but that is like if you have ridden a New York subway, you know when the guy starts screaming that smells like poop down the way, you get up and you move, otherwise he's gonna come sit on you. Well, th these are people who say that words are violence and misgendering somebody is incitement. And then this guy is screaming that he's not afraid to go back to jail and he'll kill somebody. So and there was no need for anyone to step in and neutralize that threat. It's it's patently ridiculous on its face. And you're right, Ian. They're showing uh, they're showing nice looking pictures of the person who was an aggressor, and they're showing pictures that make the uh, defendant in this case look as unlikable as possible. Every single time there's a story of a police officer shooting somebody in the news, the media has this unwritten rule. Never show the mugshot. Never show a picture of this person in police custody. Always show them when they were younger. Always show them in their most attractive moment. And then this guy's on trial, and of course... They have to represent him as uh, some kind of violent maniac they, and not someone who did something reasonable and tried to help people. Look, so they're showing you pictures where he doesn't look at it. It's, it's they, they show a photo of Penny in handcuffs looking at scowling, right? They show the perpetrator, mm -hmm. the, the person who was who the aggressor with a glamour shot in city lights. Mm -hmm. It's probably 10 years old, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. My question this, now, this, 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 he I'm, I'm sorry, this once. So this. Yeah, it feels intentional. It, is. it feels like. Of the media intentionally wants to gut and rip apart and destroy. And the legal system ha is playing the lapdog of the media, whether it wants to or not. Like, they don't want their careers to be ruined. I bet Daniel Penny's lawyer was like, don't say anything in public about it. But I'm wondering if they Daniel Penny posted a video. Daniel Penny did. Yes, he, I, saw I, that. I haven't seen it yet. Was it an emotional plea? Because if he hasn't captured people's emotions yet, sort I feel of. like he's doomed to the legal system. But if he can get out ahead of it and start making no internet way. videos, nope. then maybe I, he'll I, be like the guy... There, with, sorry, there, there's questions about whether or not people in New York on a jury will actually convict him because mm -hmm. they're probably going to be like, there will be regular people saying, I experienced this. No way. We can't convict this guy. Mm -hmm. But I have a feeling that after a few of the uh, riots and Antifa smashing windows and setting fires, after a couple of those, then the jury will go in under armed protection and just say, I just want to be left alone. I'll, I'll do whatever you say. Yep. Yep. 
I mean, there's a question that the United States has to ask itself, um, and I'm taking this from a conversation that I, I had on my podcast the other day, and it actually didn't uh, come from my guest. It came from him paraphrasing a book that he'd read recently, which unfortunately I don't remember the name of, but you, you really have to ask yourself the question, who are you rooting for, right? And whenever you look at these stories, whenever you analyze anything the media is talking about, whenever you're looking at a public policy prescription, you have to ask, who is this rooting for? Who is this helping? Who do we care about? Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.